Hello, I'm John Shepard and in this video I'm going to show you a very simple but highly effective workout that you can do in your local park. Many of us are in lockdown at the moment so we've got to improvise when it comes to developing our athletes and keeping them going and I've found that with a little bit of creative thinking much can be done in your local park and adjacent roads as long as they're safe enough to run on. Okay, let's get on with the workout. A current staple after the athlete has done their own warm up and some functional movements are these running on the spot drills. And you can do a low leg cycle or a higher leg cycle. The objective is to step over the shin or over the knee depending on the variation. Using the gradients that you've got around you can also add some variation to the way the drills are completed subsequently. So here we were going up and then down this little slight gradient doing an ankling calf drill. We then progressed to the calf drill into a low leg cycle and then calf drill into a low to high to run variation. This is the latter one and basically you start fast and then transition through the phases trying to keep the leg speed going while stepping higher and higher. Change, rotate, work from the hips to generate greater speed. So continuing with the theme of improving hip power, here's Jahisha doing a high leg cycle, hands on hips. Although this may look like normal running, the emphasis was placed on using the hips to generate forward momentum to pull the leg or the heel from back to front as fast as possible. Here's what I was shouting out as she was doing it. Right now, pull it up and over, that's it. Next up, we used a slight downgrade to do some scissor bounds, striking the ground as quickly as possible. The gradient will of course speed up the movement, so I'm hoping that this will prime greater foot speed and contact. Here's Paul doing a step and swing drill, which is great for sprinting and for long and triple jump. As the takeoff foot comes down, swing the free leg away and up and leave it in front of the hip for a second or so to really project yourself forwards. Initiate the movement through the hip, not through the takeoff foot. So now I started to think about what else we could use in this particular park. So Jahisha here is doing some speed bounds up this moderate gradient. Just make sure it's not too slippery and make sure you bound and don't run. It's odd but over the years I've always found that athletes have difficulty with this version of bounding. The objective is to swing the hips away so it's that hip power again and don't hold the front phase of the movement too long. Drive the foot down into the surface so you're really trying to drive up the gradient or across the ground. Again, as we've been doing a lot of recently, we've been making use of both uphill and downhill sprints. So here's Paul getting after it with an uphill sprint. Obviously, you've got to think about your mechanics and keeping the heel recovery pretty low and getting some direction behind the body before you come up into upright running. I'm allowing the athletes to have a full recovery because they would normally be competing indoors. So I'm still going through the various phases and organizing my training accordingly. And we've been doing more downhill sprinting or fast running. Now, as I say in various posts on my social media, the benefits of downhill running may not be direct, but they can potentiate performance and improve eccentric capacity. Do build up carefully to running downhill as it takes a bit of getting okay, used to and you only want a slight gradient. I'm hoping that these improvised workouts will maintain the athlete's power and speed and speaking of speed if you're interested in the free lap timing system do contact me. I've pulled together quite a few improvised park, small area, small space, indoor workouts recently due to the need to because of the various lockdowns that we've been subject to. So do check out the playlists 
on the channel because you can still train and you can still develop the qualities required that will enable you to jump well come the season. This one, for example, features Kenya's fastest sprinter, 10.14 man, Mark Odiambo. So do look out for that one on the channel for further inspiration. As usual, thanks for watching and good luck. Keep up whatever training you can do. Do subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have on this video or any others in the section below or through my other social media. And if you're interested, keep watching to see a small promo on my channel membership offer. Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and I'm going to talk to you about channel memberships. At the moment, I've set up two levels, channel supporter and athlete and coach member. Now, if you become a channel supporter, you're doing just that. For just £1.99 a month, you're going to help me produce the content that's hopefully helped you become a better athlete or a coach. As a coach athlete member, I've responded to a lot of the comments that I've had over the years since setting up the channel, whereby you guys want to delve into deeper levels, the subject matters that we cover on the main channel. So for example, coaches want to know more about periodization, training planning, and how you can develop a young athlete. In time, I hope to introduce some other levels of membership on the channel, for example, one just exclusively aimed at athletes, whereby I'll produce training plans and training programs. One thing I do want to add is that I'll still be producing the normal channel content, usually uploaded on a Friday, and that's still going to be for free.